manager. My name is Paul Jayanka. I'm a broker real estate manager. I've been with the company for over six and a half years. Um, I apologize. The last meeting we had, I didn't look at how large the room was, didn't have enough. Said we'd have another meeting. It took us a little bit longer because of the mailings and making the labels and sending everything out. So um, I'm a little bit about four days late from my target date. But wanted to have another meeting in order to answer your questions, explain what we're doing with this fuel and, and talk to you in generality about where we are. I'm going to answer some questions that was commonly asked. Then I'm going to answer some questions that was asked at the last meeting that I didn't have some answers for. Then I'm going to field questions from the new people. So anybody that was not at the last meeting, please raise your hand first. I want to do that group of people first because you guys didn't get a chance to ask your questions. And then all the people that came to the first meeting will take their questions and hopefully by 8.30 we'll be done. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, so essentially the store is going to be, uh, this is an aerial photograph of the building. What's in white is our existing store. We have no plans to expand it. Right now, none of this request, nothing is, is, has to do with expanding it. There's no bait and switch. We are not expanding the store. Um, the fuel center would rest on 0.46 acres of land that we're purchasing, and we're also purchasing uh, another 3.39 acres of land to have a little bit, right around an acre of land for the fuel center. At the end of the day, Kroger will own one acre of land if this thing is approved on the western boundary of the property. I was going to put up the fuel center site plan, but because it's so faded, that's why I wanted everyone to walk around. So I'll have to do that from the This is the fuel center. Um, since our last meeting, we've changed the trees on the bottom left-hand corner. Seven MPD, um, which has dispensers on both sides, which is standard operating procedure in most gas stations that you go to anywhere. Typically, their multi multi-pump dispenser is the terminology, and everyone's using one where you have it on two sides. So this would have seven dispensers, which is a total of 14 nozzles. Um, the project would have everything in dark green is vegetation and landscaping that we'll be planting. Everything that you see to the west in a light green, that's the existing vegetation. We are not touching that, disturbing that. We're leaving that alone. Um, and then also on the eastern boundary, you can see a landscaping strip. And then what the four insets show you are the trees that we're planning to plant in each of the respective areas. And again, your comments and those from the city will be more than happy to revisit the trees that we're planting in order to, um, in order to uh, shield the store a little bit better. From our last meeting, one of the other things that came up was, uh, it's hard to see on this plan, but if you can follow the easternmost crosswalk straight up, a gentleman asked if we could have a sidewalk that punches all the way into the center, so we've incorporated that out of the plan. Also in our last meeting, a young lady asked if we can put a um, crosswalk on the western boundary of, of Waddleston and Johnson's Ferry. So that's now incorporated into the plan as well. Again, these are all things, as long as the city says they're OK, we'll be more than happy to incorporate them in the plan. Um, we're closing one of the entrance points today. It's the what is today our westernmost entrance point will be closed. You see that little dark patch there to the right of the fuel center? Um, hours of operation. Our hours of operation typically are 5.30, 6 o'clock to 11 p.m. Um, from our last meeting, I've discussed it with our operations people. Um, they've okayed me to close the fuel center at 10 p.m. now. So we've gone back and revisited the hours and said we'll close it at 10 and we'll look at the traffic at 10. If it falls off again, they may actually close it even earlier, but I've gotten the concession to get them to change it from 11 to 10. I think the opening time's around 6, could be as early as 5.30, it just kind of depends on demand. Um, but if you want to talk about that, I'll be more than willing to take it back if you want to make sure it's 6 p.m. Um, traffic's, oh, as part of the project, we also have a traffic plan planned. 
and a um, pedestrian controlled crosswalk. So that's what you see the little black box in the middle of the street there is a signalized intersection and we've already spoken with the city and they said that you know the, the, their primary focus is Ashford, Dunwoody and Johnson's Ferry. So the plan there would be is our signal would be subservient to the other signal meaning two things meaning that um, if you trip the, the mechanism to activate our signal but it's not the right time to work into the other signals that are being done on Johnson's Ferry, your wait time will be a little bit longer. If you catch it at the right time, it will then trip and work in conjunction because there's software technology that communicates and keeps all that flowing and going together. Um, the other component of that that we're adding is um, sensors. There's actually sensors that you place and it basically detects uh, the car. If a car was to sit on Waddleston and do a ride out, it would sit there a few seconds and turn right out. Light wouldn't trip. If the car sat there and sat there and sat there, then the system would recognize, okay, there's a car sitting here, so it's not turning right. So let's trip the light, and then it starts a sequence. So we, you know, we understand and, and agree that we need to be subservient to what's going on at Johnson's Ferry and Ashford Dunwoody. So that's our plans with the signalization uh, if this comes to fruition. And again, we would have a pedestrian front, uh, crosswalk such where you push a button and it would actually trip the light as well if there's no cars there. So that's what's planned as far as fuel center, landscaping. Um, the two big oval items at the top of the site plan, that's where the uh, underground storage tanks are. And we design these things in such a way that our tractor trailers can get in, dispense the fuel, and leave. If we can't get fuel in and out of it, we wouldn't build them. Um, so I wanted to let you know that. Oh, the other thing that came up was hours of dispensing or, or um, delivery of fuel. We've spoken with our logistics people. It's not a problem if you want to put like 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. curfew and not have trucks deliver fuel. We can have it come during the day. That's not a problem. We've, we've already talked to our operations people about that. So that's the majority of those questions, I hope. Let's see. you guys can see that this is what is planned right now from the western edge of our existing property the shopping center they're planning on widening the road a little bit and essentially what they're doing if you see that solid stripe on the right half of the picture That is designed as a stacking lane for people that are going to be turning left to go north on Ashford Dunwoody. So they're basically widening the road to create this long stacking lane so more people can stack, which means the people coming through, so if you're traveling eastbound, you don't have to, if, if it's a few cars today that, that would basically block the rest of the road, they've created this long stacking lane so the Johnson's Ferry people can keep going and connecting on to southbound Ashford Dunwoody is the plan. And then they're doing some road widening here as well. I'm, I'm showing because the city um, gave them to us because we asked what was going on and some questions we had from you was, you know, what's the road improvement plan? So we wanted to share those with you. So that's essentially what's happening in your street. Uh, this is a rendering of exterior elevations. We would use earth tones on the building, on the, on the canopy. The bottom of the canopy is 15 feet, 6 inches. 3 inches, Melissa? 3 feet, Melissa? So um, the top of the canopy is 18 feet, 6 inches. Um, there would be seven dispensers um, in the fuel center, and it would you know, match the earth tone or the colors of the building. Okay, so 
questions that we got from the last meeting. Um, the reason we're doing this is we have about 18,000 people in the trade area. And the trade area that we have really is south of 285, east of 400, northwest of Peachtree Industrial, and actually um, Georgetown trade area because of the, the, the lake and the stream. There's actually a portion of the trade area doesn't doesn't come this way. They actually go up into Georgetown. So, but we have about 18,000 people in the, in this area, and we get a lot of requests for fuel centers. It's the number one item we get across our enterprise. That means across, across all of our Kroger stores, but in all of our units where we do not have a fuel center, that is the most prevalent question that we get. Can we please have a fuel center? Can we please have a fuel center? And what we're trying to do is figure out how to accomplish that and meet as many needs as possible of the community. Uh, I was asked a question if we ever tried to put a fuel center at the Georgetown store or in Cherokee Plaza. And I checked with some people that had nine plus years, basically our whole history of fuel. And we've never formally tried. Now, there are engineers that have laid out site plans showing you know, possible variations of where to put a fuel center. Oh yeah, we have that for every single store that we don't have a fuel center. We've got some permutation that we've looked at. But as far as formally applied, we've actually never done that for those two areas. So I just wanted to answer that question. Excuse me? Because we haven't been able to put a project together that makes sense at those other two locations. We're trying, we're actually, as I, um, as I stated in the other meeting, we're trying to figure out how to buy another parcel in order to put a fuel center up in Georgetown and um, in Cherokee Plaza. Our goal basically is to put a fuel center in every store. And um, a long time ago, grocery store used to be a, a bakery, used to be a um, general merchandise, used to be your uh, meat, and then you had a health, um, an HVA or health food store. I mean, over time, those things became consolidated. And in our, in our mind, and what we've seen in our business model, that fuel center is just another component. So we put it up there with, um, you know, having drive through pharmacy, having um, you know, bread, deli, everything. It's just a component of a grocery business and our business model. And that's why it feels so important. So our long-term goal, every store is going to have a fuel center, is what we're shooting for. <laughs> Talked about the hours. Uh, came up during the meeting, and we're six feet, right? Right away. There will be, a, as part of this request, when we, um, we actually are creating a left-hand turn lane. Let me show you that. Our plan calls for creating basically a center turn lane. So to do that, we're, we're moving six, we're taking Johnson's Ferry Road, widening it six feet on the southern side and six feet, or more than six feet on the northern side in order to create a center turning lane. So what that does, it actually fits in with what the city's planning to do right now because they're widening the road up to that point. So it'll just connect on and keep going through. Yes, ma'am. Um, the land's part of the right of way, so in, in the city's master plan, um, in, most in municipalities. Uh, to do that too, to get that to you? Or is that well, it's not the right if they choose to do so, they do so, but often um, city takes additional right of way land for future needs and. I have 
if I can get through the rest of the last week. It's okay. I mean, that's what we're here for. Um, I think I've got, oh, the other question I got was how many stores do we have on two lane roads? Or how many stores or fuel centers do we have on two lane roads? Um, I went through half of our inventory. I just started in store one and worked our way through. And after 67 stores, I found 11, which is about 16% of our stores that have stores with fuel centers and or there are stores on two lane roads. Somebody asked that. Um, but you know, most of our stores are on four lane roads or larger roads. But you know, from time to time, right now about 16% show to be on two lane roads. That was a question that was asked and I couldn't answer it because I had to sit there and actually look at all the stores. Um, Were those stores more in the concrete line than the No, ma'am, I started at store one. I mean, the closest one actually is Crabtree. Crabtree. Are that close to both of those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, If you'd like to see where the stores are located, I do have a listing here, plus all the store locations. Maybe you can ask those. So the question, the question was, do you have any, do you have any stores that have fuel centers on two lane roads? I looked through half of our inventory. I started at store two and worked my way through, and halfway through, I was at 11. So the answer to that question is yes, I have it. Um, hold on. Um, so what I'd like to do now is the people that did not attend the meeting, you would like to ask a question, I would love to do your questions first, then I'll go through and answer the people that came last time. She had her hand up first, yes ma'am. Um, have you contacted Georgia Power to find out how this um, switching station, how the stray voltages are gonna affect the underground tanks? It, I, that shouldn't be a problem, but you haven't talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, the question was, have we contacted Georgia Power about the proximity to the substation? I don't believe that we have, but you can laugh, but it's not... I, okay, as a Georgia Tech electrical engineer, I can assure you that there could okay. potentially be problems. So my question to you is, have you or do you have plans to contact Georgia Power to verify that the grounding grid that's within that area is not going to affect the underground storage? Yes, ma'am. We go. We do work with all the utilities when we put in a unit, and we, our engineers do just that. Talk to sewer, power, water, detention. We go. Also, we go. As an engineer, I can assure you, we don't always. Have you contacted Georgia Power to verify that you're not going to have any stray voltage issues? No, I. You haven't, Alex. Okay. No, I haven't. So I will do that next. You were up next, yes, sir. Can you tell us if there are any variances, administrative or zone, anything that you're going to be asking to see for? The only thing, no, we're only, we're only asking for a special use permit um, because in this zoning designation, you can have a convenience store, but in order to sell fuel, you have to ask for a special use permit. So, but no variances, right guys? No variances. Yes, sir? And just second question, you say fuel, what fuel do you sell here? Uh, Unleaded and diesel. premium and diesel. So it's just gasoline. It's not other fuel. Right. It, it's it's fuel and it's it's gasoline and uh, diesel. Yes, sir. The, uh, I live about uh, three hundred yards from your your proposed station. I can't think of a worse location, traffic wise. During certain parts of the day. Um, I leave in the morning at 8 o'clock, I come home at 5 in the afternoon, the traffic is backed up, it can be backed up as much as a half mile down the road and in either direction, stopped by the traffic lights in Ashford Dunwoody or actually in both directions. What kind of effect, what kind of traffic studies have you done to make sure that your project will not change the traffic patterns to make it worse. I mean, I, I see people coming from outside the area, from, you know, Georgetown Shopping Center, all the way down to buy fuel at, at our, this proposed location, and just adding more to the company. What studies have, have been done that can convince me that, you know, this is going to work without inconveniencing the entire neighborhood? Um, thank you for that question. The question was, what's the traffic impact of doing this? 
and there's a percentage of, of customers that are shopping and getting fuel at the same time. And when we factor that into the traffic analysis, we found that at peak AM hours, we had a 44 car increase at peak AM hours. And at peak PM hours, it was 74 cars at peak PM. Per hour? Per, per, per that peak hour? When, when, when they do it, they look at the, the worst AM time and the worst PM time and say, OK, this is the worst at whatever it may be, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 5 to 30, 6 to 30. And they say, that's the worst. So the worst is uh, 74 cars at PM and 44 cars at AM. And a part of that, what I've learned through this process, is that there's some uh, um, IT data that basically states that a certain percentage of cars are already on the road. There's some um, accepted applied principles within the traffic engineering world that basically says, you know, you know your, your traffic count is X. A percentage of them is going to come. Plus, I mean, it, there may be internal distribution that people were using other fuel centers that are nearby, and they may use ours. So you're moving a trip from one area to another, which means you may be lessening something over there. But our counts are 44 peak AM and 74 peak PM. So that doesn't really answer his question because his question really is, what's has this study been done to identify how many incremental cars will be attracted into the neighborhood by your fuel center? That's How many cars? Are you saying 74 additional cars? At peak hour. So during other hours. The last meeting you said 5,600 cars per week. What I said the last meeting, sir, was we had 5,800 gallons was our, was our usage. We believe we're going to sell about 58,000 gallons a week. We guesstimated 10 and a half gallons. And that's how we got to the number. I just. 5,600 cars. But the other question, if you recall, what I stated was that a percentage of those people shop at my store and they're doing both. We found that number to be around between 34 and 39 percent of the people shopping in the store are also getting fuel. So the net new gain the peak hour is 44 a.m. and 74 p.m. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I apologize if this is asked. That's right. Her question was market analysis, did we do one? We actually approach it from two different ways. We actually have a group of people that do a, a sales and market analysis, and they come in, they drive the area, um, they look at the other uh, businesses, and they put together a forecast. If the forecast doesn't work, then that would be one way to say that this doesn't work. Um, the other part of that, as I said earlier, is fuel has become part of our business now. Um, as we've incorporated bakery, deli, malnutrition, health and beauty aids, fuel has become a, a critical part of our business. And it's something that, you know, going forward, all Kroger stores, our goal is to put a fuel center in every unit, if at all possible. So can I, can I, can I... Sure. So there's two reasons. Because it's our business model, we, we found that it's most effective. But also we did a data analysis and said, if you did a fuel center, there is enough opportunity to create the fuel center. And does that mean by taking business away from the other gas stations and then just like with the areas that can't be redeveloped or that, that can be that part of my analysis? I mean that Well there's always if, if the question was the question was if I do this unit, will that um, impact another unit? Yeah, it could. Another gas station. Another gas station. Close by? Yeah. Well, logic would cut okay. right. So yeah, that can happen. But that's no different than a Sprouts coming in uh, across the street, and you know, it's it's that's what's wonderful about America. If you're a good competitor, you do your job right. I mean, that's what this is. It's an opportunity to service the customer needs. The customer needs. So you're defining. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. They really appreciate the fuel savings. That's your your store needs more money by this gas station, which impacts the other gas two gas stations that are a block a block and a half away, and impacts our neighborhood if they go out of business. And, and 
and that's your business model. Code. So it's just your business model. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not based on customer need. I just want to be. I just want. Well, no. I, I, we a long time ago, this was a, a much harder opportunity. People fought it all the time. This is the first time we've had opposition in the last seven or nine of these that we've done. And what's happened is people people just like having the fuel center. They like getting the rewards. They like getting the money off. They like the company. Sir. So. What I said was in the last seven or nine fuel center, we've had no opposition. The, the community's been in support of these items. Um, while all these people are here saying they don't want this fuel center, I've gotten a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails saying, hey, please don't stop, don't quit. We want a fuel center. So, so hold on, hold on, hold on. This is not, I'm going to answer questions. Hold on, wait. Um, well, I, I hope people have gotten to speak to speak. So oh, I'm going to give everybody a chance. To provide this information. <laughs> you, you lost a fuel center bid on Piedmont Road last night in Buckhead. There was no. extreme community opposition no, we didn't. to that. Lindley, I'm sorry. I was at the meeting last night. That didn't happen. Well, that's what's been reported in the news media. And we provided you with a, with a letter signed by what the Lindley's referring to is the, the who opposed it. And we also prepared from the neighborhoods of Hampton Hall and Cambridge Park. I'm sorry. I got to correct you because you're, you're incorrect on your information. Please stand up just a moment, please. I'm sorry. I was at the meeting, sir. Just I know the project. It's my project. I don't know who she is. Well, that, that's you very kind of But you She's as sharp as all you're going to find anywhere. I'll be, I'll be more happy to go through your letter. She is going to change the deal. There she is. Put a resume up and you'll see. Well, let her finish. Well, what she's saying, I'm sorry, is incorrect. Okay, sorry, please. I'm sharing with you the neighborhood opposition and reminding you that you received a letter signed by 100 residents within 48 hours, within 48 hours, on very short notice of asking whether we wanted this, a letter that Kroger chose to ignore. And since then, you have received this document that was compiled by professionals in the fields of city planning, commercial architecture, development, and so forth, who live in the adjacent neighborhoods and who put together this document and responded point by point to all 20 criteria of your slump application, expressing opposition. Um, there is also a very loud and vocal ongoing effort uh, that you're aware of that expresses further opposition. So I, I do not feel good about you standing up and telling all these folks that you're not hearing any opposition to this because you have heard it from day one and Kroger's proceeding anyway. And Kroger uh, is going to have to convince a lot of folks, including the entire planning commission and the entire city council, in order to go forward. Now, you've answered a lot of questions here tonight. One question that we couldn't even address in our document that is raised by the uh, plan that you put up is that by the proposed widening of the entrance to Waddeston Way, which you have to look carefully to see, but what is proposed there is a, is a dramatic widening of that entrance, which would allow for faster turns in and out of Waddeston Way. And as people leave the Kroger, if they see jam-packed traffic to the left and right on Johnson Ferry Road, well, what are they going to do? They're going to go where there's no traffic, which is across the street on Waddeston Way. And if they are to do so, um, they're going to have that extra broad curve on either side to speed that up. But that's where our Cambridge Park signs are. So my question is, do y'all plan to tear down our Cambridge Park signs or ask the city to do so? Is that, is that part of what's going on here, too? Um, about bending the road or widening the road? The well, that's where our Cambridge Park signs are. We've right. had those there since the founding of our community, so far as I know. Y'all may know better, but um, it's been there for many decades. Is, is that part of your plan, too? Is OK, I got like, three questions. So let me get the first one, Piedmont Lambert. Piedmont Lambert is an 82,000 square foot store that we're working to get entitlements on in the city of Atlanta. And we looked at that project, and before it went to committee, we, Kroger, had made the decision not to put a fuel center on it. Why? Because we didn't have enough parking at the store. Two, because of the parking deck. Three, it just didn't fit. We couldn't get the trucks in and out of it. We couldn't flow. We decided internally at Kroger not to put a fuel center at Piedmont Lindbergh. So when we got it approved at Kroger, then we started the entitlement process at Piedmont Lindbergh. We've never shown it with the fuel center. Yes, we have drawings with it on there. We had seven or eight permutations trying to figure out how. 
but we never formally went to the city of Atlanta and asked for a fuel center for our store at Piedmont Lindbergh. That's a photograph of you at a meeting last night. This is the Buckhead View article. Actually, that's a meeting two months ago that I was at. The article says the Development and Transportation Committee of the Neighborhood Planning Unit mm -hmm. of Fulton County held true to its history of upholding the city's comprehensive development plan and denied two applications for land use permits, one per Kroger fuel center. Well, the fuel center comment is... Yeah, I'm just reading what it's No, I understand, saying. but it's incorrect. We never asked for a fuel center at that location. I'm just telling you, we never asked for it. I'll so sign it. Every Kroger doesn't have that fuel center. Well, the goal is... The goal is to have put a fuel center in every store. So what will happen is, if that project moves forward, I will, I will look for and try to find a, an acre parcel somewhere nearby that store to add another fuel center. So now I have another project to work on because we could internally put a fuel center in there and make it work. But that statement's actually, it's in press, I understand, but it's actually incorrect because we never showed the city a fuel center because we knew internally that it didn't work. I'd be more than happy to show you the, the plan with the fuel center that when we took it to committee, we never re we said no fuel center, this is not going to work. So that's actually a misstatement. We never showed that. Uh, the other question was the widening of the road. Um, the engineer can come back and tell you the exact angles later, but effectively, did you change it by a lot of degrees? A couple of degrees, a few? I mean, essentially, we pulled the curb islands down to widen the road. There might be a little change, but there's no drastic change in the pitch. So what we'll do is we'll take this plan. You can't really see it very well. Explain 
how we've done the modeling and how it works and the historical data that we have and how we've shown that it can work because if we can't make it work, then we won't do it. Um, hold on, yes, question at the end of it there. I, what I hear is just Kroger, 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 and what you're missing is the real human element. There are many people sitting in this room that have been born, that were born and raised in that community. We have many senior citizens sitting in here that I have been, been my parents and they walk to these grocery stores still today. You are detracting from their livelihood and their joy being able to go and do that. They will no longer be able to do that because you're increasing the traffic. You're stopping us the strollers. You're stopping us wanting to go do the wonderful events that our city has been working so hard to build. You're taking away any opportunity for our walkable, living, just thriving community. And, and you know, the genesis of that story was the wind dicks You know, wind dicks huh? community grocery stores. I mean, in fact, there were two wind dicks right there. Uh, one used to be a little bit further down where the, the dollar store was. Right. Right um, and, and so those were community grocery stores. So that's kind of what you know, we have this expectation. And what we're trying to do is we want to, um, we've had other stores where we put in a fuel center, we're doing a remodel. Part of this project is we're doing a remodel inside the store, uh, nutrition, produce, deli, bakery, uh, and floor and decor. And doing those things with some management adjustments, we've had the success and we've been able to turn around stores because we believe there's enough people here that we shouldn't give up. And that's what we want to do. We want to invest some money back into the store. Please don't bring in those wonderful attributes because you can't fit a majority of those great things that you're trying to sell to us in the footprint of that store. I know some of the stores you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Our store isn't big enough. So then it's ultimately going to come to where you want to enlarge the store and then it creases further problem. Um, potentially, yes, we may come back and expand the store. But, but right now we're not planning. And to answer your question, sir. You never plan for just a moment. You plan for the future. Right now we are not in any kind of discussions. It is not on our next five-year plus plan to touch mm -hmm. the store as far as an expansion goes. The question was in the last meeting, someone said, why don't you just shut the store? My response to that is I've got a, a lot of associates working there, you know, close to 100 associates. But, but why is it not successful? Why can Publix, right. who puts a lot of money in their place, be successful, and you folks not be successful? I don't understand. And I I said, uh, we, we, we took it. Yeah. And you still can't, I mean, it's, it's crazy to me, but. We all take our eye off the ball, and <clears throat> things don't get done the way you want them to get done. Our management said, let's fix this store. Let's do the fuel center. Let's do a remodel. Let's make it work. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing I didn't tell you: if we close the fuel center, uh, I want to tell you that because a lot of people ask that. I'm sorry. Um, if we close the fuel center, we fully close it, meaning we remove the tank, we remove the dispensers, we remove the canopy. If we were to close the fuel center, it's all gone. You won't see a shell or a husk. What if you close the other two gas stations? So I wonder, well, why can't you make this sort of work? Or why not buy the Valero? I purchased that. Um, the Valero. No, just let me answer this question. So, why, why can't you make this sort of work? We want to make the store work. I understand. Without the fuel center. We want to remodel the store, do the fuel center. Those things help us with our sales. It keeps our customers in the trade area from shopping other places. Because those customers right now, we have a lot of leakage. Customers in our trade area are not shopping. Yes, you can answer it. Customers in our trade area are leaking out. They're going to other stores. We want to keep the people, the 18,000 people, shopping at our store. So we want to fix it. And one of those fixes is also the fuel center. Um, can I yes, comment on that? Sure. At the last meeting, and you can correct me if this is wrong, but this is what I heard. That Kroger store is one of the poorest performing Kroger stores in the area. It's well, an underperforming let, store. Let me finish my, my statement. But one of the best performing WIC stores in the area is what I heard. Um, I don't know about the WIC numbers. So you, if you got the WIC numbers, then you got it from someone else. I'll have to ask operations, you, but I didn't. I didn't. Can I finish my, my question, sure. though, please? Okay. You want to add a gas station, mm -hmm. and you're talking about 10 and a half gallons on average when the majority of your customers at that store are WIC customers. You're, you want to attract the community, but you're not listening to the community. 
you're adding a gas station which the community doesn't want, but you want the community to shop at your store, when everyone in the community is going to turn around and go to Publix because you're doing this, Absolutely. what are you going to get out of that gas station? You're going to get people that are going to that store with the WIC going to the gas station. That's all you're going to get. You're going to drive everyone else in the community out of it, the store and the gas station. As far as the WIC comment, I know I didn't say that because I don't know what it is. If I don't know what it is, I don't, you don't say it. I know what WIC is, but I don't know what it is at that store. Your statement was I said that. I did not say what our WIC number was at this store. I can go find out, but I don't know what it is. But Wouldn't I, that affect your, your analysis of the average amount of gallons that get purchased by a vehicle? No. I'm sure you guys have run cash no. versus credit. And I don't believe that goes into the analysis. I can, ask someone, I can ask someone that does the analysis work for us that question. Is there any new? Um, Thank you. I don't know exactly. Basically, it's it's government subsidies and, and assistance for people that need um, help. What happens if you construct this? Mm -hmm. The store still doesn't thrive. When you shut the store down, how many cases do you have where you then keep the gas station and don't have a store? None. I think I recall going to a program further down in Georgia, a Kroger fuel center where there was no Kroger store close by. Maybe I was wrong, but that precipitates my question. What's the question? So if the store no. fails, you shut down the gas station. Yes, sir. Wouldn't it make sense to have the store thrive before you even contemplate the gas station? We've tried that. It's not been as successful. We we did this at the Holcomb Bridge store, the one in Trickham and, and Highway 92, um, Mansell Road. We've done combinations of fuel center and remodels at the same time, and it's been working. That's why I want to do it. And I'm going to get this young lady's question because she hasn't. Yes, ma'am. You're saying you want to improve the store for the community. Yes, ma'am. That would be great, but the Without a fuel center, two stores without a fuel center, head to head with good competition for the neighborhood. At Publix, I believe, is very successful. Correct? And I don't know about the, I don't know about the profitability and whatnot. Um, but fuels, again, fuel's just a part of our business. And we've been asked to get a fuel center at this location in order to keep it. I want to get this young lady's question because I don't think she's asked one yet. Well, the traffic counts on Johnson's Ferry was like 14,000, and Ashford Dunway is around, I think, 24,000. I mean, we don't, but a day, yes, ma'am. That's your uh, average cars per day on those two roads. But I don't know exactly what people leave from what house and how that works. Well, we would actually time our, our fueling trucks to come at non-rush hour times. The young lady in the back has a question with striped shirt. Uh, yes, looking at your drawings, and the ones you can put up there, the green space that you left on the border is two cubits wide. Is that the green space that you left on the border? On the western border or eastern border? The western border. Okay. Um, her question was, are we, what are we tearing down in the, in the view of the substation? There is an existing dense tree landscape area already here today, and um, this shouldn't interfere with sight lines. And what we've done since our last meeting is we've densified this area here, so effectively it's going to be pretty hard actually to see the fuel center coming in this direction. Um, signage for the fuel center would theoretically be here with the, the pricing sign over here. So only if you're in a parking lot are you actually going to see the fuel center pricing. And then we have a row of trees here as well. And the height of the trees is supposed to get to 14, 15 feet too, right? So effectively, when the trees come into place, it, the fuel center canopy is not going to tower over top of it. 
Actually, this thing's going to be pretty well hidden, quite frankly. These trees are existing and we're not touching them. Are they on your property? No. No, of course not. Appreciate it. Thanks. What are you doing on your property? You're going right to the property line and adding two rows of trees. The question was, what is the visibility going to be like in the sight lines? And what, what I'm saying, what the, the question was, there's density in trees here. It's going to be hard to see through this. I'm speaking about those trees that aren't on your property. It's unfair to bring those up as if that's a value you're bringing to the project. If they're so, not on your property, you cannot cut those trees down in any case. Right. I, I, I didn't say I was going so to. You are. You're presenting it as if it's a value that you're adding to the property by leaving those trees. It, I'm presenting it as an obstruction. If you're standing here, you're not going to see the substation because there's a row of trees here as well. If there needs to be, if we don't have the coverage, we can put more trees along the western boundary of our property. But since the density is such, uh, yes, the truck circulation has nothing to do with the landscaping. We can get the trucks in and out, or else this plan wouldn't work. And we wouldn't do it. Okay. Any sorry. Any new any new people have any questions? Because yes, yes ma'am, and then yes, ma'am. So you said you started using Johnson. Yes, ma'am. I, I come home that way uh, three or four times a week now and go by the store in the morning. Okay, and, uh, so when the traffic is backed up, you're leaving that way? How many times have you bailed off and gone through the neighborhood to say hi? Oh, no. No, I don't. You didn't like that, No, I don't. I mean... Do you know how many people that do do that? And, and, and that was the point earlier. All the good traffic engineering in the world. Into the, into what is the people that are going to do that. All the good traffic engineering in the world cannot overcome people's disregard for the rules. I mean, I don't know how else to say that. What's yes, sir. What's the name of the arborists that you're in contact with? The Cap are you using the Cat County arborists? It would be the city of Brookhaven. If they have one, if not, they, they would refer us to someone. Who's the arborist? Who's the EPA contact? And who's the Georgia Power contact? Who are those three contacts that you're dealing with? Um, if you give Alex your email address, he'll tell you who he's going to talk to. To answer those questions. Do we have any no, we did not talk to the power company. We have talked to the arborist, though, I think once or twice. I, and what was the third person, ma'am? EPA. EPA? I'm just, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. EPA. Thank you. So, whoever worked, thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. And then you're next. How are you going to bring your gas tank trucks into the shopping center? Johnson Therapy Road is a posted road. You can't bring. Uh, the trucks would come in Ashford. Well, the trucks are getting there now from the back of the store. Uh, they're coming in Ashford Dunwoody because there's a there's an entrance. Yeah, in there. sometimes those permanent trucks go on Johnson Ferry Road and they're not supposed to. Denver. Then I'll. Can, can they go on? Ashford no, Dunwoody? they can't. Not go on Ashford. Well, how does that if, if our trucks are going on a road they're not supposed to, then I will talk to distribution and let them know so that. Actually, they're going to come in through the back. They're going to come in through the back. They come in from here, turn around, and go back out. They can go out the back. But if our trucks are going on Justice Ferry and they're not supposed to, then I will talk to distribution first thing on Monday and make sure that our guys are going on the right routes. Because I know there are some roads that you're not allowed to have trucks on, and hopefully they're abiding by that. If not, I will. I will make mention of that. And then you were next. Yes. I'm still hung up on the traffic situation. Yes, sir. South of Johnson Ferry. You said it's already backed up to old Johnson Ferry Road. You had 77 cars at 20 feet. You're backing up another third of a mile, which is going to take you to the intersection of Peachtree Dunwoody. And already it takes you 45 minutes in the afternoon to get from the hospital to the subdivision. And fortunately, the timing of this is such that with the road improvements and that stacking lane that I showed you that the city's doing, because right now, when people are going Johnson's Ferry and then they're turning left to go north on Ashford Dunwoody, if three or four of them take too long, they're blocking up the rest of the road and you guys can't shoot by them. That long taper lane that they're creating changes all that because now you can stack more cars that's, to go. That's meant to ease problems and you're going to put us right back where we were. Right, but he, he's just. 
he's, 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 he's explaining that the existing traffic is bad and that I'm adding 74 at peak PM and 44 at daytime, but at the same time that's happening, there's also a relief measure yeah, in place. That relief place. measure is supposed to ease what's going on to that. Right. And if you add 74 cars more, at, that's the right, right back where we were before. And that's something I'm going to have to have my traffic engineer show and model to answer your questions. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Something you said earlier that I'm a little confused about um, regarding the request that you have had. You had requests for more fuel centers. I'd like to know who those requests came from and when you get those requests, do you look to see if they live anywhere near the place that you're going to put in the fuel center? Um, or, you know, I could live in Lilburn and work somewhere on Peachtree Street and say that I'd like a fuel station, but I'm not, that you're regarding The question was, where are the people that are saying we want a fuel center, where do they live? Well, when you shop at the store, you scan and the store knows your primary store where you're doing the most shopping. So I'm polling people that just shop that store. And because when they put in the register information and whatnot, it was from a transaction at that store. I'm not polling, I'm not polling other surrounding stores. I'm only polling, Um, actually, if you, so what do you do, tell the checkout person that you'd like to have a fuel station? If you look at the bottom of your receipt, if you look at the bottom of your receipt, you know everywhere you go, they say, please go online and do a survey. That's the survey I'm talking about. And the only I do actually, I do know where they live. I do know where they're shopping because they're a loyalty member and I have their, their, their address in their primary store. I mean, I can tell you where everyone shop. So, I'm taking my loyalty information, they, go on, they actually take the time to go online, which you're right, it is, it is an absurdly low percentage of people that are actually filling out these surveys, and they're going, we want a fuel center, so that's what's coming. It is direct from the store, not from another area. Yes, ma'am? Well, they don't. I'm telling you, they're, we're they only... The Park. We're only polling people that are shopping that store, because I can poll all the other stores individually, but I'm only polling that specific store. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. And then um, you're next, and then you're next. Okay. My concern for the whole project has been that shopping center parking lot is so crowded right now. How are we going to get any more in there? The traffic light you're suggesting to say it's going to be put to watch the way. We've got that traffic light, and you said it's going to be a, it's going to be time. Mm -hmm. But that traffic light, that's for Dunway traffic light, for a circle traffic light. I mean, there, there, it's it's. I don't see how that's going to improve traffic at all. And I think you guys are going to need to price your product off a quick fit down there at Beach Street Industrial, which is pretty damn cheap. And if you do that, you're going to bring in more than 58, 77 cars a month or whatever. And you're going to get, I hope you're thinking that you're going to get up to 300,000 a month or 400, which is going to bring a whole lot of cars in this neighborhood, which we don't need. The safety issue is my whole thing. There's just no, it's just not safe now. Um, we don't have, I wish we had volumes that high, but we don't have any volumes that high, um, and we price relative to the market. So I'm, I'd love to have a 300,000 gallon a week fuel center. I know you guys don't want to hear that, um, but this one's actually projected like 58. Um, correct. And, and is it as on an average, are, are other units closer to the interstate? Yeah, they do closer to 80 and 90,000 gallons a week. Yes, sir. Um, I can kind of cut to the chase here. How big is the is the shopping center? No. It's seventy-one thousand square feet. How big is the fuel center? You said it's about an acre, which is forty-three hundred square feet. So what you're planning on doing is putting a fuel center in, which is going to be larger than half the size of the shopping center. As a matter of fact, if you take the fuel center and you put it in the front of Rita's, where the parking lot is, it would overlap on Ashford Dunwoody. That's how big we're talking about. None of these pictures really illustrate that very well, but it is an acre of land. It is larger than half the shopping centers as exist right What's now. The of the That's how big it is. What's That's what they're planning on putting 75 feet from a residence. 
Now, I, when I pass that thing around, I apologize for passing that around 160 earlier. by 35. I just wanted to have you guys look and see where the other fuel centers are. Did you get a scale with you? There's none here. And there are none near a residential area, unless you can tell me something different, but I did a pretty thorough study, and there are none in a rural area, and certainly none that are within 100 feet of a residential area. Crab apple. So my question is, fuel center directly across the street. how can you have Crab a fuel apple. center this is such a large departure from the Kroger normal model. I, it, it astounds me that you would present this. And but I, as I'm saying, I guess our business model has changed. Fuel has become part of our business model. Yes, there are exceptions where we don't, but there are fuel exceptions would, where you don't what? put a fuel center in. Right. When we just can't do it. Right. And we actually have site plans showing us trying to go internal in this site, but we didn't like those layouts. So we didn't put it internal to the site because we have other site plans showing it right in the middle of the parking lot, towards yeah. the front end. What do you mean by internal to the site, but in the middle of the parking lot? In the middle of the parking we lot. Have, we, we, we have, have they build new ones. They they put a Kroger in. Typically, they leave enough space. They have a they have a, a so you can drive all the way around the fuel center and they're parking them right. on the other side of the fuel center. And then then there's you know the right of way and then there's a four lane highway <laughs> and then, and then on the other side there's usually commercial development, at least in my research. And normally we always try to put fuel centers in the parking lot if we can. We start there first. We do that. All the stores don't have a fuel center. We have multiple is reiterations this the same trying. Is footprint as the one on Roswell Road? Uh, you talking about at Hammond? Bell Yeah, City Um, 350. Um, huh? I think that's actually a five. I think that's a five MPD. I think. And this is seven. Because that was a question that was asked last time: was why don't you do five? Well, we found that when you do five, so you do end up having some stacking. And as somebody so eloquently illustrated, that in our store at, at Hammond and Roswell, we have some stacking. But if you added two more pumps, that would alleviate the four cars that are constantly stacking there. Thirty percent bigger than the one on Roswell. Right, and what we found based on the volume that we're doing, um, for whatever reason, so right, the, the newer, our newer numbers. models, higher volume, we're putting in nine, seven is our low, and we've actually had some where we've, we could actually put in a four or five and said, you know what, that's just too much, we're not going to do it. If you had 600 homeowners in your immediate area asking you not to put it, would you make an exception and not put it in? It, it's difficult because I've got 18,000 customers in my trade area. If you have 600 homeowners that are your primary customer, your primary that walk there like that woman had mentioned, if you have approximately 600 homeowners asking you not to do it, your customers, would you make the exception like you make at other stores? Well, the exceptions are for big for other reasons, not. So it's not the <laughs> <laughs> How many Kroger stores do you have? How many Kroger stores do you have in 18,000 dollars? Okay, can I answer it? Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, sorry. Okay. The the fuel center. Sorry. Give me your question again. Okay. Let me give you an easy Please. question. No, I think the hard one. I'd rather have the hard one. I'd rather have the hard one. Okay. Here, here's the hard question. Sure. Could you let these folks know what? Like, have you done a gap analysis on this site? This, That's this our market analysis. You okay. need to determine okay. where we're going to get okay. our sales so from. Would, you know, a gap analysis says, can we support, or do we have a need for more of this product or this retail mm -hmm. store? I think the majority of the 600 homes would love to have a restaurant there. There's not enough restaurants. There's enough service stations. The gap analysis would scream for a family restaurant there. Would scream for it. I think there's a whisper for a gas station. And as, as a retailer, having had other um, jobs in my life as far as what business model I was working on, nobody has come up and wanted to buy this property as of yet because the bank has had it out there. there. The only other person that wanted it, somebody wanted to build small shops that were competing with the small shops that were already in there. That right now is the only person thus far that has tried to buy that property. So as far as a gap analysis, I can't look at uh, a restaurant business because I'm looking at my business saying, okay, I need fuel, I need to upgrade the store, 
So we want to put a but, fuel but center the here. 600 homeowners don't need the fuel. They don't need it. And the market has changed. Right. The market has changed. You know, the good times are starting to roll again a little bit. So the restaurant theory, we've seen restaurants going down just a little bit. Um, I think Pure's putting in a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I think that because it hasn't sold before for what's needed, I'm not sure if that holds water. And that may change, but the bank has elected not to go here. They had, they've been trying to sell it for a while. We finally reached an agreement with them after they went a bunch of different other avenues and they came back to us and we worked out an agreement to do the bank. Um, but, but there was another part of that question I didn't answer. So, and Would you consider buying the Valero if this neighborhood didn't want it? Would you consider that? The Valero, if it was just sitting there, it, it, we don't fit on it. If you have a triangular piece of land, you've got a grade change, you've got a huge grade change within it, it's not flat, and it wouldn't hold a seven pump fuel center. You wouldn't would have not this, enough pumps to service people. It wouldn't hold seven pumps, so no, we couldn't fit on the Valero. It's almost the same size. Yeah, but, but shape-wise, yes, maybe in square feet, but it's a triangle, not a rectangle, and it also has got a lot of to, to, topography to it, and all of our fuel centers, while the area here may be high and this area may be low, but our fuel center sits flat. I mean, ideally, yeah. I, not an ideal we won't. We wouldn't put a fuel center on a slow piece, but we've laid out on the Valero, and we don't fit. But also, that's an operating business, and they don't want to sell right now. But we don't. We've asked them in the past. Yeah. How, how many Krogers do you have in the in your eighteen thousand trade area? Uh, one. That's its trade area. You just have the one. That's Kroger. this store's trade area. Yes. So within that, Cherokee's excluded. And yes. So if we got 9,000 signatures? That would do it. That would help. Yes, ma'am. Really? I'm, I'm going to ask this question of you. Sure. But I'm also asking anyone in the room who knows. This is an open question. You have mentioned, sir, that you are waiting for the final approval from the city of Fort Haven before you can build this. You started your comment saying pending approval. Can you tell me as a citizen, what is our next step? Is there a schedule on the calendar right now meeting that we can attend? Yes. yes. Is there, yes. When is, this is what I'm asking. December 3rd. December 3rd. Anybody who's interested in opposing this, um, I, I don't want to step on Paul's toes. No, you're fine. This, but please feel free to come up to me. I'll stick around after the meeting. There's a critical meeting December 3rd of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission will vote on this and will vote to either recommend that the City Council uh, uh, allow the slough application to pass or not. So that December 3rd meeting is critical and then that recommendation will go to the City Council and the City Council will then vote and that will be a super important meeting and we don't have that date yet. And, and it also, and, and uh, to add to that, if you are opposed to, to this in any way, uh, when I think uh, someone said 9,000 signatures, with all the holidays coming up, it might also just behoove us as a community, if you are against this, to maybe show your support to other shopping centers in the area, rather than that Kroger. So, Paul, I need to step on your No, that's all good. <laughs> okay. You're fine. Everybody step down. You get two questions. It's all good. Uh, look, the... I'm disappointed that it said the fuel center, and I will say something to the newspaper because there was never a fuel center on that plan, so I apologize, but that I never had a fuel center on that plan, and I don't like it when a gross piece of information is wrong like that. I never showed them a fuel center. Because someone asked me, well, why don't you have a fuel center here? And I said, we couldn't make it fit. We tried seven ways to Sunday, and we pulled it from the plan before we asked for corporate approval. Yes, sir. Um, just for, you know, this is America. So you can, you can and, and to answer your question, you can voice your opinion. It's really, really, and I don't mean to step in your meeting, because I'm not. Anybody that wants to say whatever they want to say can say that they're a city council member. You go to brookhavenga.gov, pretty simple. Go to the city council thing, their, their, their email is there. You can clip, paste it onto a two line, and say, I am in favor of the Kroger Fruit uh, fuel center or I'm opposed and the more they get it's the power of the people we vote for them they represent us they need to hear what we have to say 
And whether they want a fuel, whether we want a fuel center, that's fine. If that's the way it ends up, that's great. If we don't want a fuel center, at least you've made your voice known, just like when you vote. Yes, sir. You may have covered this in the first meeting. I got here about five minutes later. That's all right. I'm. I live down this way, Hampton Hall. I could you explain why you want to close that and open this? Let me tell you my situation. It is so easy for me to come down here and go to Kroger. Now you're making me do a left, get into a gas station parking lot. This seems to be in my way. There are, I think, going to be cars coming out here getting in my way. Uh, I don't understand this as opposed to leaving that open and let me come in here, go get gas. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I just don't understand why you're doing the that. The question is why did I close this entrance point? Well, common sense would tell you, well, you don't want to close any entrance point, but we know that DOT doesn't like to have up team entrance points. So we knew going into it when we showed the, the city and DOT the plans, there was probably the best thing to do is to close this entrance point because so you have distribution, you don't have people making a, um, a movement this way with somebody going the other way. It just, DOT usually wants less access points. So if we have three and we can live with two, then sometimes we'll go down there, to two. The other one's right up next to Valero. Right, but the, the number's staying the same, but it's not, this would leave it, make it higher. So this keeps the number the same, because right now I think there's five. No, 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 that's not my question. Don't do that. Leave that open. Why are you doing this? You didn't understand my question. Okay. This seems so much harder for me to do all of these turns as opposed to a, a choice to go shopping at your Kroger or easily do this. This is not here. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this. Well, when you're across the street from another entrance point. We already are. Uh, That's nothing new. You always try to align drives and not have drives. And you said something about the district. You just now said something about distribution trucks. Didn't you tell me that they're going to come this way? They're not going to come this way, right? I believe they're going to come around the back and go in here. I don't understand this. I think it's simple. I think that's the issue. I mean, it's a, you want a key intersection on the Right. We've had stores where we were slightly misaligned, and we. I don't think we need a traffic signal either, guys. I disagree. I guess we try to find that. I think there are a lot of different Yes, sir. Question. What are the size of your 67 places compared to the one you're going to put in? Oh, the actual um, I mean, number of pumps? Oh, I'm sorry. I just looked to see if they were on two lane roads or not. I'll have to go back and go. Do they do varying size? Uh, they're more than likely, they're all probably five sevens and nines. They're all called mega? They're all five sevens and nines. Uh, if you want, I'll get the list and I'll go through and tell you which ones are. The other question is, did I hear you correctly earlier when you said you never had any opposition like this before? No. Um, what I said was the last batch of fuel centers that I've done, I've had three people at my meetings and most of them were just curious or actually were, so were, were in favor. What were the three? This is a large group. And, okay, that's a very good point. Thank you. Um, when we did this nine years ago, there'd be more of you in a room. Nine years ago, we were doing these, there was more of you in the room saying, no, 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 no. And there's been a huge paradigm shift. People saying, no, we like the fuel centers now. When we go into cities and say, hey, we want to do a fuel center. And they go, yeah, these are great. We, we like them. I mean, cities have come to appreciate them. People have come to appreciate them. I will tell you, seven years ago, people that were doing my job before me. We started our fuel program nine years ago, seven, huh? Eleven years ago, we started fuel centers. And up until the last five or six years, we had huge opposition. And then there was a big shift, and people liked the fuel centers. It, it, I'm on a plane with a guy in the first What, ma'am? What, ma'am? Uh, there's about to be, yeah, I'm working on one. Uh, no, not right across the street, but for my house? Well, I don't live, I don't live near a commercial area. I live... Well, neither do we. We actually did that one. We actually did that one. 
actually do live in a commercial area. We live in an urban area. We should, yes, we should, we should understand that. It's a neighborhood area with, with community shops and places we can walk to. Yes, ma'am. What was the problem with uh, Cherokee? Why was Cherokee not given the go ahead? You have For a fuel a center? Fortune expanding that store, taking over the post office. Mm -hmm. You have plenty of room. You've gotten rid of the, the can of ice cream place that used to be there. There's all kinds of room. There's all kinds of entrance. You're on a main drag. You're on industrial. We are a two-lane highway. We are the way to go get to Cobb County, the people who know. We are the people who can get to, to you know, Brookhaven, to, to uh, uh, Buford Highway, and so on and so forth. There's all sorts of connections that are going on. We've got Pill Hill going crazy. If you have a doctor's appointment any time between 9 and 11, good luck. I mean, seriously, you can't get out of it with a lot of way. You want to put another, another there. You want to make traffic, you want to make it us have a crazy business. It's ridiculous. Go down to Cherokee. Look at what you have there. You have a humongous parking lot. You have plenty of rooms. You've got a four-lane major thoroughfare. There is no reason why you have to pump that money. Um, a couple things. We took out the Brewster as part of our agreement. We have the right within our lease agreement to put in a fuel center. But do you want to? But we wanted to see if the parking allowed us to do so. Meaning, was there, when you put in a fuel center, sometimes it's between 50, you can go as high as 90, but 50 to 70 is probably the average number of parking stalls it takes to put in a fuel center in general. And actually, I went by that store last night after the Piedmont meeting and didn't see enough open space to sit there and put in a fuel center. So right now, we've elected not to put a fuel center there because we don't have enough parking to support the store. If we did, we would we would actually go after and do One that. The thing you can do in that parking space is park your car. You can park your car anytime. I've, I've shut down there because you don't you don't take good care of your store. You, <coughs> you don't have deliver, deliveries on time. You run out of stuff. You don't have it. It's not available. Blah 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 blah. I turn around and go down to the other one. I never had a problem parking. Day night, it doesn't matter. So I really don't think that you are thinking about the impact that you're going to have on, on a, a beautiful residential neighborhood. And this is not small potatoes. This is a, a lovely area. Now we're very proud of it. And I think it's just going to drag it down. Because we're on the main way to Cobb County. We're on the main way to all kinds of places. Right. And it's a two-lane road. Excuse me, Paul. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. You know, this, is, this is my second meeting, even though I arrived late to this. And, and the first meeting, there were less people, it was a smaller space, even though there were a lot of people waiting out there. And in a way, it's, it's, it seems kind of silly to me. Why don't we just cut to the chase? Who is the person at Kroger who decides whether this can shut down? And what's their name and what's their number? And perhaps the 9,000 signatures or whatever it may be that we need to really make our point that we don't want this to happen. Instead of going through you, if you gave us their name and their email, we could perhaps make our case to them instead of kind of wasting our time and going through these we're missing dinner and family time i think it's just angering the neighborhood a lot more this way you don't have to get that brief what what is the name of the person at kroger their, their name and their phone number uh who's in charge of this um my director is fami hashish tommy hashish fami f a h is that the decision maker about this no m a m i f a h uh, it's hard for me to hear you f, f a h h m i M I H A S H A S I S H H I S H. Sorry, Hashish. So that, that's that's the person. He's he's my director. And, and what's his first name? Fami. So it's. And what what's the last name spelling? H A S H I S H. He is my real estate director. So that's the decision maker. No. Well, it's no. He's not Their the final. Their decision is made. They filed an application for this special land use permit. I think the purpose of it. Am I correct? This is the purpose of this meeting to inform us as a community because you are required by statute to do so of what you have done. But their decision is made. That much is clear. Is that fair to say, Paul? Um, we would like to move forward with the fuel center. Okay. We. Decisions made. No sense. So okay. And, and who and, and who is the person who is in charge who made that decision? Every company has someone who's on top who makes a decision. 
who was that person who, who did so? FAMI is the next chain of command. Excellent. And, and what is FAMI's email address? Um, FAMI with a dot in the middle at Kroger.com. FAMI Hashish, FAMI.Hashish at Kroger.com. You, you have talked about cars. What about trucks? Um, we expect three trucks a week, and we would have the trucks come at non-evening hours. That was one of the requests. So we would have them come during the times of the day where there's... Um, we're, uh, we're talking semi-trucks, or... Well, any truck. Could an 18-wheeler go in there? I don't think they have... Well, they might do that maybe on our interstate ones, but I don't think... I don't think we have a lot of trucks, no. And we don't we don't encourage trucks, plus the road network we're on hopefully does encourage trucks. Order, you know, commercial trucks, you know, uh, it, contractors' trucks, no, it's, you know, panel trucks, are those the same in the city or town as cars? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If there's if there's a gentleman that's doing work on someone's house and he's coming down the road, then you know, probably stop and get fuel if he needs it. But we don't encourage 18-wheelers or don't have any of those other facilities for them. Yes, sir? Paul, you know um, who, what, what, what store is taking the 28,000 square foot grocery store on Peachtree Industrial across in Claremont? Is that Kroger by chance, or is that, do you know what brand is going there? A 28,000 square foot store? Yeah. It's not us. It's, now. it's probably a... Sprouts or something else, but it's that sounds about their size. They're around twenty-six thousand square feet. That's not us. I mean, the, yes, ma'am. She had her hand up, and then you're next. I just want to echo what this lady in the back, what this woman in the front said, and that is, the voice has to go to the government. Okay, I mean they're the ones that are deciding. You've shared information with us, but Kroger's obviously made their decision. It's now up to us as citizens. To express our opinion to us. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just agree with this lady that, in my opinion, Cherokee Lodge would be much more viable than Six lines compared to our two lines. Um, if you do decide to keep the women here at um, John's Ferry and this bill passed or something, what would you do? What would your plan B be or C be as far as what to do with the um, if we, this doesn't get approved, then we won't buy the property and we'll just, the bank will go back out to market with it. What happens to the Kroger store then? You don't know, fix it up? And leave it it is? That I have to have a discussion. Right now, I've been directed to do the fuel center and the, and the remodel at the same time. Uh, He's had his hand up. Yes, ma'am. Sir? At the last meeting, you mentioned the parking spaces in Cherokee. Mm -hmm. And the reason you guys didn't put the fuel station there is because fuel station went in, you wouldn't have enough parking, I guess for your store? Yes. Okay. If you put the fuel center there, how many parking spots would there be in that location versus how many parking spots would there be in Cambridge? And the reason I ask is that parking lot seems to be a lot larger than the parking lot at Cambridge. It is larger because you have, um, well, actually, I got a, I, all I know is, I gotta, sorry, I'll have to get the same point for that one. I know when you drop one in, it takes around 70 park installs. Because when you do the drive aisles and the circulation, you lose typically around 70 park installs when you put in a site plan, a fuel center. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. It kind of depends on the configuration. I don't know off the top of my head what its parking ratio and parking count is. I know it's on the lighter side. This one, I think we were five per thousand in parking. But there, I think we're at, I want to say mid fours or something, but I can find out. And I'll put it in my so it's response. It's very, very close. The parking situation was very close. You're saying that Cambridge I, is a little bit bigger, but that the two are very, very close. Cambridge is at a 5.0, and this fuel center doesn't impact the parking. The fuel center proposal at Brookhaven would impact the parking. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but when I do the write-up for this one, I'll make that as one of my responses so that I have the numbers in there for you. I'll, I'll go and pull the site plan with the fuel on it and tell you before fuel, after fuel, what it looks like. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I have a question that, that you might answer, or you could at least take it back to Kroger. But to the gentleman's point over here about, about the entrance that's right across from Waddeston, 
For those of us who drive in and out of Boston every single day, it seems to me it would make a big difference, make it a lot easier on us if that if the entrance could be used. There's one, it's not all the way up toward the, toward the ATM, but there's another one that that doesn't have, a, it, there's not a street across from it. Right. And it would make that, it, would Kroger consider changing that if, if, if the neighborhood agreed that that would help us with our driving? You mean your 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 question your suggestion is to close one of the other entrance points that's from the east? Just remove the entrance. Well, I guess if you would close it, yes. If you just use the entrance that's just what forty feet, fifty feet up. You mean don't have the entrance here? Move it. Yeah, and have it so that it's not so we're not competing when we drive out of Waddleston. We're not competing with all the traffic that's turning in to go to the pass station. Um. Or coming out of the gas station. Right. If you move it, you have to move it a, a considerable amount because they don't like them slightly misaligned. There's a conflicting turn. Somebody turning left out and somebody turning left out the other way. They meet in the middle. There's another one that you can use, though. You've got three. You've got three. There's three now. There's three. Yeah, and there's five total on the street. The middle one seems like it would be convenient for customers and a lot safer for us. Um, the difficulty there is also as you start to get to the middle, the road's bending. So you would have cr traffic trying to cross over. The road is starting to bend as you get towards the middle of the center, plus they're doing the, the, the stacking well, lane. Well, that's what they do now, and it, it works. At, at certain times of the day, yes, it does, but at peak hours, I would assume it's hard to take a left. At peak, at peak hours, it's easier. <laughs> And it would also keep people from cutting through our neighborhood. When I, oh, it definitely keeps going to be a Yeah, right now, right now it's already becoming a tough road. If you put a, a light there, it just really makes, it, going to makes be it very, very easy. Right. I mean, if you want to see my phone, I have, I have a picture of 14 cars lined up at 8 o'clock in the morning on Watson Way trying to make a right-hand turn. I notice people at 8, 8.30 having a hard, sometimes having a hard time making the left. There's certain gaps where you can make the left, but there are other times you have to sit and wait for a while, depending on how that flows. I'm talking about a right. I'm talking about a left out of Waddleston to go north on. Right, right. 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 and. Okay. You mean making the left out is harder? So, so the signal would help. No, terrible quarter, terrible no, we, we don't want to say, we just don't want you there. <laughs> Fair enough. But we looked at it in the traffic and we saw the stacking and said, well, if the signal here would actually allow you, you to get out, not to mention if someone's not being kind letting you in, it gives you an opportunity to get in. I understand. Where you and I disagree right now is you think there's this absurdly high number of people that are come from all over to this field center, and that number is not as high as. Well, you, you said earlier you're going to add 74 incremental cars. 74 hour. peak hours, yes. No, this is peak hours, 74. So those guys are new to the neighborhood. Just as you said, they're going to look at the GPS and say, How do I get out of here? I got my cheap gas. How do I get out of here? And, and you don't really care. You just want a gas station at every curb. And we have yeah. four children in that yes. yes, sir. This is from Region, Regency Center's demographics summary. Okay, which is Regency Center's where the Kroger is. That's our landlord. Uh, it's your landlord, right? Uh, daytime population in a three in a three mile radius is 165,000 people. Yeah. Now, I don't know how many of those people have cars, but a lot of them come from our neighborhood. Except three the miles. Five mile radius is four hundred twenty-two thousand. Three miles takes you all the way over to Roswell and Fountain Oaks. Okay, one mile is uh, <laughs> is um, median income. 
median household income is $125,000. Why you can't put a Kroger in the service of a $125,000 income family, I don't understand, but that's another story. Um, but 165,000 people on a three mile radius. So three miles would take you all, all the way up, probably the perimeter. We don't anticipate this thing pulling three miles. I mean, the trader we have, you're going to have most of the people that are living in between south of 285, northwest of Peachtree, and east of east of 400. I think it's Peachtree Street. Uh, there's, I'm sorry, I can't escape me right now. There's a road east of Peachtree Dunwich. That might be it, but it's east of east of 400 is the trade area. And actually, I'll show it to you on one of the other drawings in a moment. So if I live by the Cherokee Station, Kroger, mm -hmm. and want to get Kroger gas, where am I going to go? You're going to more than likely shop somewhere else nearby because it's it's a lot of convenience. That's not what you said at the last meeting. You said you were trying to pull in the Georgia Charity customers, which um, is outside of the three mile radius. I would pull those customers that are near Peachtree Industrial and near um, 285. You want the Georgetown customers, don't you? You want the Georgetown customers to come to the gas station in our neighborhood, don't you? They they will because they live inside the they will because they live in the perim exactly. inside the perimeter. But it's not part of our model because we're going to eventually put one at the other unit, so they're going to have their own. And I'll show you the trade area map that I drew. The neighborhood planning zoning is meant to not attract people from outside of the neighborhood. Is that right? It's, you're not supposed to bring people into the neighborhood from outside of the neighborhood. Is that the neighborhood planning zoning? Is that is that how I understand it? Well, I. I but don't, you want to bring the Dunwoody Kroger shoppers into our neighborhood from Georgia. The ones that are south of 285 will more than likely come if they happen to be by this way, but if they're not, they're not going to come this way. Which is still outside of 3 miles, but you think it's just going to be the ones south of 285? Wait, do that again? Even if it's south of 285, that's still outside of 3 miles, because the statement that you made that you're not attracting them is, is incorrect. But do you think the people who live in the Georgetown neighborhood, which is north of 285, aren't going to come? If they're already coming through, yes, they will. If they're not already coming through, no, they won't. If they happen to work or have to daughter ballet, yes, they'll come. They'll come through, but they're not going to go grossly out of their way to come to the fuel center. Then I, if it's if it's part of their route, they will. But if it's outside their route, they won't. Okay. Then you're not going to get that many of those people. Right. How are you going to get customers to support the center? Whatever. <laughs> your business. No, no. Your, your, I'll show you that trade trade area. Well, what do you expect the yearly throughput on the station to be? The the gallons? Uh, fifty-eight thousand a week times fifty-two. Fifty-eight thousand gallons a week times fifty-two. What is that? Three million something. Okay, so it's not it's not rise to three point six million a year. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm a calculator. So 58,000 times 52. Okay. okay. The, you know, the one thing that we the decision is made, it's up to us to try to go against it. The dollars and cents works out immeasurably for Kroger. You're talking about the pumps, the number of people coming in, maybe 14 people total for two shifts, seven days to operate that center to bring to sell $3 million of gas, on which they're probably making. 30 or 40 cents. You look at the store and they've got 50 or 60 employees, which is probably just barely making it because it's such a rat hole. It's, there's just too much money involved for them not to go after it this way. And this is in my backyard. I'm going to fight and kick every, every step of the way. Yeah. You know, using your numbers. Rural our neighborhood. And then we're there. Using your numbers, did you just stay at 10 and a half gallons? I, I just, I'm and guessing 10 point. Yeah, that's 287 thousand cars a year. Okay. Divided by fifty two. Well not additional take oh, yeah. they will, But it's they not additional to yeah, three hundred thousand cars. Between thirty four and thirty nine percent of that are already shopping the store. We're, we're, we went through and looked and, and said who shopped shopped in the store and bought fuel in the same transaction that was between thirty four and thirty nine percent. Do you have a tracking study that says this works and its impact to the yes. They don't. You know, and they, I've worked with developers before. They don't care about traffic. I've asked them about traffic in the past. The city might, but 
Developers don't really care about traffic, and I'm sorry, Luanne, who's got whose husband's a terrific guy, but a developer, and uh, <laughs> absolutely yeah, guys look good. Yeah. But the, but developers don't really care about traffic because that's a community problem. And if you ask a developer after they've had a drink or two, they will say it's a community problem. The community will take care of it. So if we're talking about traffic. It's falling on deaf ears. If we're talking about dollars and cents, it's falling on deaf ears. Do you get the idea that it's falling on deaf ears? Okay. Yes. The only thing we can do is talk to our city council, who are supposed to have wide open ears for their constituencies. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Asked why your program won't make money. You guys have been pondering this. One thing that you failed to understand is that you've had 200, 300 people, citizens who've been in the neighborhood for 40 years. I worked at that store when it was in Wind AC 25 years ago. It was a dump then. For the past 25 years, every store that's come in has just repainted. The compressors are failing. It's all just always been cosmetic. Anyone who's been in the neighborhood longer than two years understands that about your store. So you're planning a remodel. I would suggest to you that you go back to your superiors and say, if we want to make this store viable, it needs to be different. You're looking at the fuel center as its own money-making indicator, but if you're not gonna keep a fuel center when the <coughs> store can't stay open, then all of a sudden you've got dead property. Please keep this in mind as you're considering your dollars and cents things. That store is awful. It was roach-infested 25 years ago. I can't imagine that the roaches have moved out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so please keep that in mind. If you're really right. planning on remodeling and re rejuvenating that store, it can't just be a paint shop. It's got to be that stuff. And I don't think you guys have the money for that. And so it will always be a Wix store, which your guys know is not where the profit margins exist. That's why you need the fuel center. It's obvious to us. We will contact our representatives. Okay. But if you're interested in making that store viable, you've got an uphill battle on the store. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Well, she needs to add that the customer service is so poor. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. And the produce is so bad, and the meat is so bad, and the fish is bad. And if you take bad meat, that they don't even say it. And those are all things that shouldn't be happening. And when I get those reports, I make some phone calls internally and say, we need to make a change. Um, the pharmacy's good? Good, so we have a good pharmacy. <laughs> Pharmacist is awesome. Yes, ma'am. Paul, I have three questions okay. for you. Would you agree that that area is zoned neighborhood shopping? That's what the zoning is today, right? You agree with that, Hey, it's neighborhood shopping, right? Alex, it's zoned neighborhood shopping, right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And do you agree that the purpose of neighborhood shopping zoning is to assure that the uses authorized within the neighborhood shopping district are those uses which are designed to serve the convenient shopping and service needs of the immediate neighborhood area? That's exactly why we're doing this. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm trying to serve the 18,000 people in the area, and that's why we're doing this, and it's allowed with a special use permit. Don't you agree that servicing 54 to 56,000 cars a week exceeds the needs of the immediate neighborhood? Yeah. 5,600? Um, 54, 5,600 exceeds the needs of gas of the immediate neighborhood. The majority of those cars are already on the roads today. And that, that wasn't my question. You're required under this zoning designation to service the convenient shopping mm -hmm. and service needs of the immediate neighborhood area. And, and wouldn't you agree that that number exceeds the need of the immediate area for gas? No, ma'am. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, give me your question again. No, give me my question again. No, that one I, the one I. Well, answer the gas analysis question. Because we, we, 